All right. So I'm with my Sacred Inclusion Mastermind family, and uh, we just had a really good catch up. It's always a pleasure to be here with y'all. And now we're recording for the YouTube. So me and Catherine can send this to any of our friends who want to learn about our amazing adventures we just went on. Um, my mom just came to visit me in Ecuador and we went to the Galapagos and then she came to stay where I live. And then we spent some time in a city called Cuenca, which she absolutely loved. And Catherine visited Belize for a few days and then Mexico with her new boo. Uh, and so we're gonna hear about this. And uh, so thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for all the adventures. So I'm gonna get right into it. Um, yeah, this was one of the most ex special experiences of my life. I'm getting excited. Um, yeah, you know, I moved to Ecuador three years and I had three years ago and I hadn't seen my mom in about a year and a half. So just, the opportunity to spend time with her is always precious. And moving to Ecuador, that is the hardest part, is being away from friends and family, like hands down. It's probably the only really difficult aspect I have of that. And um, so her coming down, it meant the world to me. It was so fun. It worked out like greater than I ever could imagine. It was really like everything, all the the plans and the logistics and everything, it was just so amazing. So I'm really happy for that. And um, what I'm gonna say, okay, yeah. So when my mom, when we were talking about it, my mom was like, look, like if I'm coming to visit you in Ecuador, we're going to the Galapagos Islands. You know, I worked my ass off, I saved up my money, we're going to the islands. And you know, it's the tourist, it's, a, it's like the tourist attraction of Ecuador. So it's a little bit more expensive and to get there. And I'm like, oh, my finances are, he's like, hey, any help you need, I got you, but we're going to the Galapagos. And I'm like, yo, like, all right, we can do that. So we planned it and then we're, we pick a day to buy our tickets or whatever. A week before we uh, decided to buy our tickets, a friend, Ecuadorian from Quito, my man Sebastian, who was living here where I live now for 13 years, he tells me, he's like, yo, dude, I, I got to tell you, I'm leaving Vilcabamba. I'm like, what? Where are you going? He's like, I'm moving to the Galapagos. I'm like, what? Like, that's crazy. Uh, what what island are you moving to? He's like, uh, San Cristobal. I'm, I'm like, well, I'm really sad you're leaving because that's my man, but I'm actually about to buy a ticket to the Galapagos and that is the island we're going to. Like, I was like, you know, we're th thinking about like, you can, there's like, I think four or five different islands that people live on, but we didn't really want to do the boat thing. So when I found out that he was moving there, that's the island we're spending all five days there. So not only was I with my mom, but I pretty much, I pretty much spent like all every day with my mom and then the night with Sebastian, my friend. So I got to experience life on the island, not just as a tourist, but as people that live on the island. He's only been there for four months, but it's a small town. There's 3,000 people. I played basketball three times on the Galapagos, which is just crazy to say. It's like hooping on the Galapagos. It's, it was just <laughs> mind blowing. And I just got experiences, like even going to his house, he lives a little up in the highlands and he rents this place out where there's, like, there's mango trees and peaches and guanabanas which are soursop in english and all types of different fruits and he has a 11 year old and an eight year old child and his wife is amazing so we get there and his children are in the trees cutting guavas down for us like giving us all these fruits and they cook this fish like on this like old fashioned grill and my mom my mom loved them they loved it she loved it so it was just a very very a uh, special experience that, you know, like I said, it wasn't just the the normal, I'm a tourist. I go to the tourist places. I got to experience something different, which is really cool. Um, and the Galapagos are insane. It is a whole other world. Uh, you know, I recommend anyone who, you know, wants to experience some sort of tropical island that just doesn't make sense. That is a good place to go. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on the path as well, so we can meet up as well. But um, the craziest part about the Galapagos is the fact that the animals are not afraid of people. And like, I heard about it, but to experience it, it doesn't make any sense. Cause you know, my whole life animals see humans and they're like, run, it's a human. Get out. 
but the the sea lions just like walk right past you like you don't exist. There's little birds that like hop on your shoulders and like looking at you. Uh, there's iguanas that are just like wrestling right in front of you and they don't pay you no money. The iguanas, like if you get kind of close, they start looking at you. But, and then, I mean, obviously I didn't try to touch it, but they're, them, but they're so comfortable with humans. It's like nothing I've ever experienced. And it's really bizarre. It's really cool. It kind of like makes me think what life would have been like, you know, whatever, thousands of years ago before, I don't know, we started kind of changing our, our culture, let's say, but yeah, it's really cool. Um, the history of that place is also cool. You know, something fascinating is, you know, you learn about Hawaii and people have lived in Hawaii for hundreds of thousands of years, but in the Galapagos, there was no humans. The first, actually, I, I read the first letter. There was a, a Spanish, not a conquistador, but kind of, he worked for the church and he was going from Panama to Peru where Span the Spanish both had colonies and he kind of just got lost and like drifted out to sea and just found the Galapagos and there wasn't and any humans and there's this whole crazy story of all these different people try to live there and they all but failed because it's just this like bizarre environment and there's 10 islands and each island is its own world they have different environments there's penguins literally it's only a equator it's like like I looked at it and literally like I, I could like like the equator was right there. And there's penguins. There's penguins. There's these, oh my God, I got there's these giant turtles. But let me actually get to the, the our experience. So it, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like a whole nother world. It's really a crazy place. And the first my first thought was like, my goal in life is to make enough money so I can vacation in the Galapagos whenever I want. Like, so the future kids, are we going to Uncle Sebastian and Aunt Deborah's in the Galapagos? Let's make it happen. But um, but yeah, it was so cool. We get there and like, so we just kind of, the first day we felt it out. We looked around. But the second day we went on this, it's called an excursion where you go to this laguna. Or another interesting aspect is the Galapagos are, what's the word? Old volcanoes or dormant volcanoes. So there's one, you, you walk up this hill and shout out to my mom because my mom is, she's older and she probably hiked more in those five days in the Galapagos than she has in the past 30 years. She was getting after it. She was like sweating, like walking up these, these mountains. And so we get to this Laguna. It's just this beautiful place. But the second stop is you see these giant turtles and they're probably like, I don't even know, 500 pounds. You can like sit on them and they're, they're, they're fine with it. But so we're looking at these turtles. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. It's like dinosaurs. It's like, I feel like I'm looking at a dinosaur. And so we're following the path. And at one point, there's two, tur two turtles right in the middle of the path. And there is a big one, a bigger one on top of a little, little one. And we're just hearing grunting noises. And literally me and my mom are watching these two massive turtles having sex. I got the video. Um, and, and it was like, it, it, <laughs> and, and like, we were, we didn't know what to do, Like I maybe mean, I even put the video here or whatever. We didn't know what to do, but at some point, you know, our taxi driver was like, yeah, like 45 minutes and then we can go to the next place. We're like, we gotta go. So I had to, I had to sneak, I had to like walk out of the path, past these turtles having sex. And once I right, I passed them, the guy, like he hit his long neck, his neck went all the way in. And he just like dismounted and I pretty much like killed the vibe, killed the vibe of the turtles and then we kept moving. So that was like bizarre. And then we went to this amazing beach. It's just pristine. It just doesn't make sense. It's just beautiful. You can walk up on the, the rocks and look over it. And that, that's where there's these little birds, uh, Darwin. I feel like we've all learned about Darwin. That's what he studied is like these Darwin finches. With these little birds and they're just they, they want to hang out with you. It's so crazy. It's these little birds and like they're hopping and they're right next to you. And it's like, wait, like I just never experienced anything like it. So that was really special. And then um and then well, I forget what we did the next day, but I think the next day was when we went with um we went oh we went to Lo Lobaria where I went snorkeling. Oh my God. Snorkeling there is insane. Um, supposedly like of all of the islands, there's the one in San Cristobal is the best snorkeling, 
but there's these like translucent fish where there's these crazy blues and yellows and it, it's just, I don't know, it's like a disco ball down there. It doesn't make any sense. Um, snorkeling was really fun. And oh yeah, side note is they're, the sea lions, they think they're human beings. So we, I, we, we, there was this couple from Verona, Italy. And my mom is Italian American and she speaks a very little Italian, but you know, she got excited. So they're speaking their Italian, having fun. And then the, the couple goes in the water and a sea lion comes out of nowhere and just starts laying on their towel and their clothes and just like rubbing, like rubbing in on it. And it was just like, it was just bizarre, just full of bizarre occurrences. And I think, where are we at with time? To let, oh yeah, I got more time. Um, another aspect like i said is in, i think the next day then we that's when we went to visit sebastian and deb and the family and it was just yeah i don't even know what to say about that they, they cooked for us it was just such an amazing experience they're a fascinating couple he's ecuadorian from quito and she's actually born in cape verde which is an island off the coast of africa and they met in brazil so it's you know, African Ecuadorian babies. She got long dreadlocks. She just got like Rastafari vibes, just like a wonderful human being. And I just learned, got to learn what their life was like. And, you know, just like I said, play basketball. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that really stood out. But um, yeah, I think that's a good overview. Just I feel like the whole time I was like, wow, it's crazy that. This exists. Like the Earth is so, 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 so unbelievably beautiful and unique, and it's here for us. It's like we can experience it. And obviously, you know, we talked about just how tourism, like people are depending on tourism, but at the same time, tourism can be depleting to people. So it's these, you know, capitalism has a a difficult balance that we're kind of ever tr forever trying to, uh, to to manage, and so I was very cognizant about that. Uh, as things pop into my head, I'm just gonna say it. I was also I'm, I'm becoming a coach, so I'm starting my like coaching program, and one of the aspects of my coaching program is about judging, like seeing your inner judge, and being able to be like, oh, there's my judge again, and inter uh, interrupting the pattern. And I was definitely feeling some judgment towards the tourists of like, you know, these tourists who kind of all look the same. They don't really have the, they, like the energy of respect. And then I'm just like, why am I like, why am I like, I don't know them. Why am I putting this negative energy onto them? So I had to kind of keep checking myself, um, which was a, an interesting aspect. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we're all, we're all here. We're all on the Galapagos just trying to enjoy what this place has to offer. And I don't know. I, did, I thought that was just an interesting aspect to me. Um, but that was mostly the Galapagos. I have, yeah, I got a little bit more time before I pass it to Catherine. But then um, afterwards, we came to where I live, Vilcabamba. And for me and my mom, that was kind of, well, for my mom, really, that was more the relaxation bit. Because like I said, um, oh, well, let me step back. I forgot. Probably my mom's favorite part. The last day. So the whole time, my my mom, pretty much her main objectives were th three things. Seeing the giant turtles, which we saw, we saw live and direct. Uh, seeing the sea lions, which are just everywhere. They like, they run that place. But then seeing something called a blue-footed booby, which there's these birds that have these blue fins and they only exist. No, that's not true. They don't only exist on the globules. There are a lot of animals, like there's different sharks and like the penguins. There's, there are types of animals that only exist in, in the Galapagos. But blue-footed boobies is a thing. You go there and you got to find them. And sometimes it can be difficult to find. So the last day we went on this, I mean, it was I wouldn't say it was an intense hike for, you know, a fit 30-year-old, but it is, you're like stepping on rocks and it's difficult and you're going a little up and the path is can be, you know, can be difficult for, you know, someone in their 70s. And like I said, my mom was like killing, like, like oh, I'm just getting excited to think about it. Uh, pretty much almost the whole time I had to hold her hand because like you're, we're, we're stepping at rocks and we're stepping other rocks. And that was just a special moment of itself. Like I'm on this island with my mom. We're holding hands on this journey to try to find the blue footed boobies this like mythical bird 
um, <laughs> oh, and another thing is these birds, some people call them uh, kamikaze birds because they, they like to live, they live on the side of cliffs and they jump off the cliffs, dive into the water, like go super deep and then come back. Like they just be having a blast. So finally we get to the end and my mom is like super red. She's exhausted. And we get to the past, the, the spot where, um, or we're, we're actually our friend Deb, Deborah and uh, her son, they walked ahead. And then Deb comes back. It's like, yo, we see one. We see one. There's a boo for the boo. We see it. So I'm trying to like get my mom to rush before it runs away. And she's like exhausted. She's like, oh, like, relax, relax. So we get there and the, the birds kind of camouflage into the, the cliff, the rocks. So it's kind of hard to see. We finally see it, but it just looks like a regular bird. Like it was kind of far away. It's hard, difficult. So we're like me and my mom, we probably sat for, let's say, 20, 30 minutes just trying to watch this bird. And it's not really doing too much it, it, because it's far away. It's hard to see its blue feet. And because the area of the rocks was white, we were told that the white rocks is where the bird poop is, which is where the birds are. So we're trying to see this bird. We're not really seeing much. And then finally, I'm like, I got I to gotta bust a move. So there's an area that's like, do not pass. And I take my mom's phone, I pass it. I go kind of like to where the bird is and I'm getting directed by mom. And the way the rocks work, like I can like, I'm like looking over this, let's say 150 feet cliff, foot cliff estimate, mate. I'm like over it with my mom's, mom's phone. And the I just see these blue feet. I'll send all you guys put it. Blue feet and this bird just looking at me like, yo bro, like, what are you doing? And so I get the footage, I get the pics in the video. It's like up close, you can see it's it's duck blue feet. And my mom was just ecstatic. So we got the pic of the, the blue footed booby. And um, to add to the fact is I've heard my mom say at this point, probably 30 times, well, we got to get those picture of the boobies. She just kept saying that. She's like, we got to see the boobies. <laughs> and I was like, so that was a, a, a weird enough experience. And um. And then, yeah, after that, we went back to where I lived, Vilcabamba, which was just relaxing. And my mom came, watched me play basketball, met all the guys that played basketball. We got, like, dinner with my friends. And we just relaxed. And, I, like, I had some things I had to do there. So that was fun. And my mom and Tamar talked and got to know each other more and told all these stories with each other, which was really special. And so they're closer. And she, like, understands this place more. And she's like, you know, we're in the Andes. So she's just like, wow, it's so beautiful. So she liked it enough here. Uh, I think, you know, it's a different lifestyle. She's used to Philly City where you can just go to the corner store or like order Uber or whatever, which is not the case here. You know, even where we live, we're on the side of the mountain. So you kind of, you know, especially for an older person, you have to get a taxi to kind of go anywhere. So she didn't love that aspect of it, but she understood it more, which is cool. And then, but what's really amazing is then we went to Cuenca. So Cuenca is a city that's like a four and a half hour drive north. And it's my favorite city in the world that I've been to thus far. It's so cool because it was, so it was built by the Spanish. Um, God knows when. So it's got this like, I don't know, Spanish, European vibe, especially in the center district. But then, you know, the Ecuadorian, Ecuador became a country in 1820s. But it also has an Ecuadorian vibe, which is just like strong knit community. Just, I want to say people who are just like keep to themselves, quiet, respectful good people so it's a really interesting city and one really cool thing we did is there's this guy that a friend of mine told us about he's a gourmet chef and he lives in cuenca and he brings people into his house and he cooks a eight course meal with all these like incredible like every every course he brings out and he like explains it this is a almond cream with this and this and that and the meal was delicious and it was 35 dollars for like high end like in the states it might have cost like 200, 300. And my mom absolutely loved that. She loved Cuenca. We went to the uh, the French bakery like three times. She loves like Paris and things of that nature. Uh, so that was just really special. And, um, you know, it was really cool for me to just, obviously, I mean, to go to the Galapagos with my mom and hang out with my friend, that was the best. But also just get back to Cuenca. I uh, saw, so I have a friend up in Cuenca that, uh, you know, I haven't seen in like a year. So that was really special. And yeah, that was that. That was my trip to with my mom in Ecuador. It was very special. Now I'm going to pass it to Catherine. We got about 15 minutes for you to tell us about your trip. Can I ask a quick question, Ian? 
Sure can. The uh, I remember seeing you on Instagram saying that like that trip left you feeling like super go mode inspired, like really invigorated and just like full of passion and ideas and just an inspiration. It are you do you want to share? I was interested in that, like inspired about what? Like what is he so fired up about right now? And what what led to those inspirations? Mm, okay, that's a good question. Um, yeah, maybe we can go over a little over time. Uh, well, I mean, one, I think that was like the culmination of a lot of things going really well in my life, just divine timing. Um, I, I, the way I, I guess the best way I could put it is right now, when it, like in every every box except financially, which and even I feel a lot more comfortable with that. So we're talking about like just like stability emotional, spiritually, physically, I feel great about where I am. Um, really, the next step is like getting a bag, let's just say. And and which, you know, I, I never really gave maybe, I'm going to say as much energy into that as I should have. But that I just, even growing up before I started in the spiritual world. Oh, what's up, Ron? What does that mean? Oh, mm -hmm. getting the bag means making money, pretty much. It's a euphemism. Let me let me keep it. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, like, you know, okay. So I live in a small town in Ecuador. I get to my whole life is really oriented around my health. Um, tomorrow, my partner is like a research extraordinaire. So always bouncing new things. We have a very healthy schedule. You know, we go to bed around nine thirty ten. We wake up at five thirty. We do our health things like like everything's very stable we're in a really good place and then I don't know how much I told you but so I I told you guys about me stopping working with the um the compost company and that was kind of a whole thing that was stressful but it opened up space in my life and all of these amazing opportunities started coming in so one Angelo introduced me to this coaching program where this New York Times bestseller um, he made a program and he got a grant to give his program for free to coaches. And it said, you must be a certified coach, which I am not. But Angelo was like, try anyway. So I wrote this whole essay, proofread it 12 times. They accepted me. And then my coach slash mentor, Wendy, decided to do the program with me. And like, so we're on like a team together. So I'm doing this coaching program. One, I get this program. Two, a friend who I hadn't talked to in like three years calls me, hits, texts me on Christmas. is like, we got to talk. And pretty much the talk goes, like she's telling me about her life and I'm telling about her my life. And I have the intuition of, oh, like, would you like to be my first coaching client? Could be, you know, I don't expect any money. Or I just want practice and a testimonial. And she says, yes, right away. And she says, of course, I'm going to pay you because it's a service. You deserve it. So now I'm official life coach and I'm making money coaching. And I'm, so I'm just confident that, oh, like, I can do this. I can be good. And it's fun. Like, having a job, like, oh, I, like, I, I got a coaching session. Let me dive in to make my friend who I've known since I was six years old, their life better. It's so much e It's so easy to work. I'll do that work for free. So that's amazing. And then another opportunity where, where I am, it's, uh, you know, this, it's kind of a convergence of, like, free thinking people come here to kind of get away from the more stressed out society of Western culture or whatever. So there's very interesting people. One person, um, he is, not, he's a, like in the world of hypnotherapists, her, the hypnotherapy is a big deal. So there's a hypnotherapist and a life coach. And he decided to have like this study group that I'm now a part of. So I'm working with this, you know, very experienced and amazing life coach. And then there's, there's another other person who, is he's he's world renowned um doctor lymphatic and his wife is a you know a very successful life coach and therapist she does heart center therapy and she decided that she also wants to like kind of share her teachings so now i'm just working with all these incredibly not dedicated what's the word when you're experienced that's a better word whatever I'm working with amazing people who are like giving me all this knowledge so i'm just like like you know taking it all in and I feel confident for the first time I can make a stable income doing what I love and helping people and who knows where I can take it that you know hopefully one day I can make enough money that 
I can help my friends if you know someone can't afford <clears throat> they're sick. Here, take this. Like, so I just I'm it's build and and so for all this to happen and then for me to go to the Galapagos and get this amazing experience, it's like it feels like oh God got my back, and so I could come back and just like dive into everything I have to do, and I've been focused. I feel good, and like I'm ready to to be you know what to 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 walk the path of uh I always, my 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 friend asked me. Uh, my mentor asked me who's like uh, my biggest maybe idols that I kind of look up to how they live. And immediately it's Tupac and Jesus. So we call it J-Pac. So I'm ready to walk in my J-Pac. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, uh, what's, uh, Joe James was looking at me, but yo, Jesus was that ball. Like, don't like, I, I, I separate Jesus and, and Catholicism. Like I think what Jesus was talking about for me is like, he was talking about that work. It got a little changed along the way that we can not got to talk about that right now. But that look, <laughs> we can talk about that because those are those are my guys. But yeah, I, I just feel yeah. charged up. Um, I feel, you know, I'm walking in my path. Um, you know, I want to have a totally sustainable organic farm down here. We're mm -hmm. starting talking about starting a family. So I want to be able to all, all the food my family eats from our land um, and be able to share it with the community and give it take. Like I'm just on the path. It's crazy. It's coming together, and so, yeah. I don't know. That's why I'm I'm charged up. Sound blessed. Yeah. So. So yeah, well, we gotta we gonna go a little over time, but we got here by your trip. <laughs> What's up, I Belize in Mexico? Yeah, it's a it's a sum up a bowl. Um, it definitely got off to a an interesting start so I had to take a, a super early flight I woke up at like 4 a.m Rodney's driving me to the airport it's like 15 degrees it's so cold um but obviously when you're going somewhere hot you don't want to be wearing your freaking parka and then carrying it with you in the tropical weather so I'm like what am I you know at my warmest but not so I'm wearing this I have like this really cold jujitsu gi so I'm like shaking in my gi, in his truck. I also, as I woke up, I started my monthly moment that morning and I have a condition where that first day, usually I'm on my back. I can't speak, I can't move. And so I'm just like hurt, I'm cold, I'm in pain. He gave me um, some pain medication if I wanted to take, I try not to unless I feel like it's absolutely necessary. But I'm like, I'm fine, let me just pass out on the plane. When I wake up, I'll feel better. I get a whole road of myself. So I'm like, all right, it's looking up. But then a baby sits behind me and it's crying and kicking my seat the whole time. And I'm like, God, just get me to this island. <laughs> and so we're about to land and this pain is bad. So I want to be like as clear minded as possible in an area that I've never been before. Right. So I decided to pop this pill and relieve some of the pain so I can be a little more aware of my surroundings and clear minded now that I've arrived. And my body rejects it. I don't know what it was, but I thought I was going to exorcist style vomit everywhere. Like I broke out into a cold sweat. I had to strip my sweater and my gi off immediately, but the plane is landing. So I can't get up and go to the bathroom. And I, I was like, I'm going to throw up everywhere. I was just trying really hard to practice like mind over matter, like mind control, telling my body, you do not feel sick. <laughs> just deep breaths. You're good. <laughs> and it passed but like when I walked off that plane I probably looked crazy I'm like tired I'm in pain I just almost <laughs> threw up I was like oh my god so of all my traveling I've, I've just accepted that usually my first day in a new place I'm gonna get gypped until I gain a better idea of my surroundings so I get a ta an overpriced taxi which is fine um to the ferry because I'm gonna go stay on an island off the coast of Belize called Key Calker. That I've never been to Belize. Sometimes I like to travel in the way where I just ask people for recommendations from whoever gives me one. I trust that that's the one I was meant to be given, and I just go there without any the as much research as necessary. But I like to just kind of like get to know a place once I get there without over. It's like it's like dating online, like knowing too much about a person before you meet them. It takes all the fun out of it, you know. Mm. Um, so I get on this ferry and I'm like, I got my bag of plantain and I got a Coke and a Coke in a glass bottle. So I'm like, things are looking up. 
I'm happy right now. It's warm. I'm finally at this ferry. I got my ticket. We're good. And then I see dark clouds. I check the weather. It's definitely going to rain. I'm like, that's okay. I don't think the, the ferry, it's like 45 minutes. I can't get too crazy, right? I'm like, I'm just happy to be summer warm. So I sit on the top deck of the ferry and um, like soaking up that warm breeze. And then it gets dark. And I'm like, we are going into those dark clouds right now. And it just monsoons on us. Like, I felt like I had bullets hitting my face. The rain was pelting me sideways. And I'm just trying to hold my bag so that it gets it can remain as dry as possible. Um, so that when I get to my hostel, I don't have to hang everything up and it just is like murky and smelly and wet. And I'm just, I dyed my hair a few days before. So there's just red dye like coming out of my hair all over everything. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> um, and finally we dock at the, on the island. And I'm talking like, you can't see like seven, eight yards ahead of you. The rain is so the rain and the wind are so sideways and intense. So I'm waiting for a break. I know it's like an eight minute walk to my hostel, but in this rain, again, I'm trying to stay <laughs> as dry as possible at this point. There's a break and I'm just like holding my bag. I'm like, hey, excuse me. And I just like part through the ways and I like sprint to my hostel. Um, and it's like, there's no cars a lot on this island. It's small. It's just the golf carts. So it's like dirt roads, potholes, golf carts, and like small small buildings um and I get to my hostel I'm like I'm here and I try to like hang my stuff up somewhere but I realize there's no lines to hang any wet clothes I'm like I gotta hang it I got like a 10 bunk bed dorm you know like a 10 dollar a night kind of thing I like to travel like that sometimes I'm like that I just gotta hang up my clothes in this dorm room it smelled so bad because <laughs> there's no ventilation geese are thick and it's just drenched I'm like all right well here we are <laughs> sorry everybody anyway so it got off to a rough start but um it was beautiful and amazing and I'm really glad I got the first three days just of total like introvert alone time um being like a nobody somewhere and just like walking around I had lots of jerk chicken and seafood I had conch and um pina coladas and I signed up for this sailboat trip I'm like I, I don't know why I've gained this fear over the uh as I've gotten older of the ocean um but I don't like having fear so as soon as I have one I'm going to do something about it signed up for this sail trip took me out into the I've never been on a sailboat we went mad far mad far we we're out in the water and I went snorkeling swimming with sharks and I'm like terrified I'm terrified of sharks and granted these are nerf sharks which are essentially glorified catfish like they don't even have teeth but they're they're you know they're like five feet long or something like that I was I was tripping <laughs> personally but but we made it and you know we saw some beautiful coral and beautiful fish and it stormed on the way back in and the guys were really like hold the sail blah, blah, blah. you know so that was kind of cool uh, it was really intense but and then, uh, Ian, I'm glad you said what you said about the judgment thing, because that was convicting for me. When I got there, it was I was excited to have like an immersive like island experience. And it was just full of like my judge, you know, was I don't know why I even feel the need to express the negativity. Like it's one thing to observe it and it's another one to express it and like share spread that negativity. But I was telling my friends, I'm like, it's pretty, but I would never come back here. It's just full of like overweight retired white Americans in golf carts like I'm in the Key West right now to be honest and I was like why you gotta minimize it like that you can just say it was a beautiful place so thanks for sharing that uh not um those two cents because that was convicting so then I fly to Mexico in this like six person plane which was crazy that was cool it's like a rickety old thing I was like okay Mm -hmm. uh but we get there and Rodney meets me there and I was nervous because I've never traveled with somebody ever I like to travel alone because I like to I I plan I'm a planner but I plan just enough in order to be totally free and flow once I get to a place I like to go with the flow and mm -hmm. I've never thought it was worth going somewhere and realizing you guys don't travel well together and then it's just a waste of time and money that like you hate it you know, it's not worth the risk of like ruining your trip, right? So I was a little nervous, but it was so nice. We spent like six days together. 
And I don't think I've ever spent that much time with somebody consecutively. And every single moment just felt natural and easy. There was never like, I want to do this, but I want to do that. Okay, how are we going to comp- Like, just we're on the same page without even having to express it every moment of the way. Um, Yeah, that was just so, that was a gift I've never experienced before. And it was really nice. Um, I think we were like kind of at like a pivot point where it's kind of like, okay, let's assess. Have, has this been fun getting to know each other? Or is this like, is this showing further promise? And that was a really um, telling moment for us. So that was really, really sweet. I have lots of photos and videos. I still haven't posted any. It's like a really funny video. We're like on the beach. It's like the only day we got dressed up. It's like sunset. And I'm like taking a video and I fall on my ass. Some kid must have like dug a hole in the sand. <laughs> and I'm like taking the video and just totally fall on my ass. I like trip backwards in the video. It's so funny. Um, but the beaches were the whole island is again pretty small. We had like a oh sorry, we went to this place called Isla Mujeres, which is an island off the coast of Cancun. Island we kept going good. to these places like Tulum and stuff. It just felt like Miami was dropped, picked up and dropped off in the middle of the jungle. It's just not it. And all these um locals kept telling us about this place called Isla Mujeres. We're like, might as well, fuck it. Like, you know, their eyes keep lighting up. Let's follow that lead. And we go with amazing. It's like, uh, you know, on a moped or something, you get around the whole island in 25 minutes. He brought his fishing pole. There's lots of these cliffs. We found these like parts of these cliffs. You can, we climbed down. We found like a private little cove, beaches and caves and stuff. And just like, we felt like we had a private island, honestly. And it was really, it was really sweet and slow and nice. And we had a really good time. Yeah. Perfect. Uh. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I gotta say, you said Isla de Mujeres, and I said Island of the Dead, and it's definitely Island of the Women. Women, I yeah. I make sure, like, you know, I've been living in Ecuador. <laughs> I, like, I'm not that stupid. I had to clarify. <laughs> uh, yeah, other than that, that was a lot of fun. Um, if you watch, thank you. We, can, we gotta send this some of our friends, and um, yeah, peace and love. Good to so see happy. you guys. Catherine. Whoa, whoa, 